This is the logistic regression video on propensity scoring. One of the most fundamental ideas in multi-predictor modeling is that of adjust adjusting for imbalances among the predictors. Certainly this is what the analysis of covariance does for continuing outcome outcomes. The same ideas hold for logistic regression for dichotomous outcomes and indeed for Cox modeling for survival outcomes. What this module will do is discuss a different and conceptually distinct way to go about this adjustment called propensity scoring, seems to be becoming increasingly popular within the epidemiologic and medical literature. I'll describe one particularly simple way to implement pr propensity scoring, and we'll focus on the main ideas rather than the details. Let's begin by reviewing the rationale behind the analysis of covariance. Ideally, you start by forming an analytic framework of the pathways by which the potential predictors affect the outcome and perhaps with the exception of variables that are immediate within the causal pathway, any of these predictors of outcome are fair game to include in the model as covariates. Importantly, you select the covariates because you believe they have an impact on outcome. The analysis of covariance is especially designed to compare groups, even though that differ, even though even the ones that differ according to the values of the covariates. In other words, it's designed to work when there's a difference in case mix. The difference in case mix leads to different predictions for typical members of the different groups, thus accomplishing the task of statistical adjustment. In the analysis covariance, we use stroke rehabilitation as an example. If facility A treats patients with more severe strokes than facility B, the analysis of covariance model will predict that post-rehabilitation functional status will be lower for patients in facility A. Any impact of facility type must be above and beyond this expected difference. Propensity scoring works differently. The first step in a propensity score analysis is to create a model that predicts the facility to which a patient will be assigned. The predictions of this model could be the same or different from the predictors in an ANCOVA. For example, geographic location might help predict assignment to facility A, but would probably have little impact of outcome. The probability of being assigned to facility A is called a propensity score. The second step in a propensity score analysis is to combine patients with similar propensity scores into groups. The hope is that these groups will be comparable. If so, the impact of facility A can be assessed by comparing patients that were likely to be assigned to facility A and were with patients that were equally likely to be assigned to facility A but weren't. In other words, at this point, what you have is a two-way analysis of variance. One predictor is the propensity score-based group. The other predictor is the facility type. And what you're interested in is comparing facility type after accounting for, for propensity score group. The two-way analysis of variance proceeds in the usual way. Indeed, there's no need to stop with just a two-way analysis of variance. When assessing facility type, you could potentially control for variables other than the propensity score so long as these variables weren't included in the original calculation of that score. The critical assumption of propensity score analysis is that the groups being compared are effectively homogeneous. For example, considering those patients with a high propensity for being assigned to facility A, the assumption is that all of these patients are more or less the same, regardless of whether they ended up in facility A or facility B. To assess this critical assumption, you basically compare those two groups in every way you can think of. For example, they should have similar mean propensity scores. They should be similar in other sociodemographic variables not included in the calculation of the propensity scores. If you see significant dissimilarities, you want to find a statistician. To summarize, both analysis of covariance and propensity scoring control for case mix, albeit in different ways. Propensity scoring is particularly natural when the analyst has a good idea of why patients fall into the groups that they do, and when examining the predictors of group assignment is of interest to your audience. Fortunately, the analysis of covariance and propensity scoring often lead to similar conclusions. Often the primary conclusions and primary considerations which method provides the better match for the question under study. In addition, I suppose that some analysts just like one method more than the other. 